Casada, and you're watching YRQ TV. And today I am in downtown Fort Lauderdale, where the citizens of Broward County and parents are here rallying for not one more. Okay, no more. That's the chant that everyone is saying here at this particular rally today. No more. Not one more child should lose their life while attending school. This rally was brought to you today by the PTA, the moms who demand action, and the public school system. So no more. And you are watching YRQ TV. See, thousands came out today to rally in support of firearm safety legislation at the federal courthouse here in Broward County. I will be talking to two Broward County teachers, three beyond pissed off mothers, a family, and a relative that was receiving texts from her younger cousin while the shooting was going on at the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Let's listen to what they have to say about how this event has affected their lives. You're watching YRQ TV. I'm your host, Yvette Casada, and I'm here with a public, Broward County public school teacher and a student. And we're out here today protesting yeah. new gun laws. All right, so your name? I'm Cody Terman, and I'm a kindergarten teacher at Oak Ridge Elementary. Okay, and I'm Penelope Fernandez. I attend South Broward, and I'm a senior. Okay, so you're here in protest of what? What do you want to see change? I want to see that, like, I shouldn't be scared to be going to school. And I also have nieces and nephews that are pretty much the new generation, and I don't want them to be in fear of going to school. And, like, we were talking earlier, since she's a kindergarten teacher, like, um, literally there's little kids that are scared to go to school and, like, telling their parents, you know, and that's just not fun to see. Like, I was literally out eating at a buffet when I saw the news of a school being shot. Right. And I also knew the um, athletic coach director because he used to be at the elected athletic coach director at South Broward. So it's really sad to see that he passed away and stuff like that. Okay, and you're a kindergarten school teacher. That's right, and I'm also here um, representing stricter gun laws and also more resources in our schools because um, we need to be armed with more school psychologists, more counselors to help the students. There's so many students that are in need right now and they're not getting the attention that they deserve. So I'm here for them. Okay, what do you feel about the, the debate of teachers carrying guns? How do you feel about that? Would you want to carry a gun in your classroom? Um, I don't think we need to add more guns to the situation. Um, I feel that if you want to arm us to the hill first with the resources that we need and the students need and that doesn't work, then maybe resort to that. But that's a last resort. We have a lot of other alternative options that we can look to right now. Good. Well said. Let me see what your sign says here. What does it say here? Put you back in humanity. Hey, man, I like yes. that. Yeah, show it to the camera. <laughs> That's right. It all starts with you. Okay, and your sign? Mine says gun safe, but then it says unsafe. Absolutely. I like that. That's very creative. See, <laughs> this is our teacher and our students working for gun laws here in Broward County. Okay, I'm Yvette with YRQ TV, and we're here with another teacher from Fort Lauderdale High School. However, she's also from the UK, and this is one of the points that I was making earlier on my Facebook post in regards to other countries that rule with no guns in their society. And here's someone that can tell us all, all about it and how it's done. So, yeah, I moved here from England about three years ago. We had one school shooting, I mean one mass shooting in the history of the UK um, in terms of civilians. Um, we, that was in the 1990s, I was in high school, that's the only one we've ever had. And it makes me wonder, well, why do UK politicians, why do British politicians value their children more than American politicians value their children? There's discrepancy there. This country, we keep on saying, why, why, why? But the reason is money. Uh, over over kids, money over people, um, and that's got to stop. I'm a teacher, and my kids were terrified on Thursday and Friday. I had my classroom half full. I had kids who had had friends die, and their question is, when will it happen to us? It's not a case of if anymore. Right. Statistics say it's a case of when, and they're all frightened. 
it's really sad. It's really sad. So you were at school when everything took place or you were getting ready to go home from school? I actually only found out about it when I was at home. Um, I, I wasn't a frequent Twitter user until Wednesday afternoon. Um, and so it just sort of started coming out. And the thing is, you hear lockdown and you just go, oh, it's another lockdown. And then the details come out. And on Thursday afternoon, it was a terrible, terrible coincidence. We actually had a fire alarm go off in our school just before the end of school. And my kids freaked out. No one was leaving their classroom because, of course, that was what happened wow. the day before yes. Yes. for the for the, the shooter did to, to get everyone out of the classrooms. No one moved. Wow. This is, you know, we're not going to have any more drills for a while because people, are, kids are too scared to leave the, leave the classroom. So you're, right, so you're experiencing firsthand the, the, the fallout mm -hmm. of what's happening in the classroom, the fear factor yeah, that this society is creating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kids are, you know, hopefully they will start to come to school again. But on the other hand, I also think, well, I don't blame them. Uh, you know, my daughter is seven years old. She goes to a public school. She's going to go to my high school when she gets older. And I genuinely, the other day on Wednesday, my thought was, I have made it more likely that my child will die by moving to the U.S. Wow. She's a U.S. citizen. My husband's American. Wow. But I have actually made it more likely she won't survive teenagehood because of living here. And why, why should I have done that to my child? And can I get your name? Yes, my name is Joanna Peterson. Joanna Peterson. Joanna, thank you so much. But my heart goes out to you. That is a real sad statistic that you would feel that your child will die here in America. Statistics tell me that it's more likely. Wow. That, that wow. Are you getting this? Are you really understanding the effect of what, what's happening here? Like, why can we not find a solution for the gun control? And I'm almost tired of hearing Second Amendment. I mean, read the Second Amendment. Understand it. So, I, I don't know. I don't even know what the answer is. Do you know what the answer is? You have a solution? Vote them out. Vote them out. You heard it here. Vote them out. Why are QTV? Thank you. Where? Lori Woodward Garcia. Okay, and why are you out here today? I'm here as a mom. Um, my hashtag is pissed off mom. And I've been coming out a lot to the rallies and demonstrations because I believe that my job as a mom is to feed my child, clothe my child, make sure she has a great education. But I also have to defend her constitution and make sure that she has a future tomorrow. Absolutely. I'm not looking to control anybody's guns because I'm respectful of the right to bear arms in this country, but I am looking for gun safety. And we need to take the money out of our politicians' pockets and protect this nation. So the lies and rhetoric about immigrants and all of this is just a cover to take more money and put more fear into our nation. We need to remove that. There's terrorism in this country. It's young white boys with a, a, a racist agenda. That's the terrorists in this country, and we need to change our, our mindset. We need to vote out any politician that takes money from the NRA or is rated an A plus or an A from the NRA. They need to leave office now because I assure you, the American people are coming for you. All right, pissed off mom. Pissed. Yes, you, and, and I felt that pissivity. That's my new word. I call it pissivity. <laughs> Okay, so one of my questions, what, what would you say would solve the problem to, you know, what, what's a, another solution? Because sure. you know everyone is going to scream Second Amendment, sure. I got the right to bear arms, Absolutely. but what's the other solution to that? Absolutely. I think that we just have to, like in anything, we have to look at where's, where's our case studies. I think if you look at Australia right now, they had a mass shooting and it's ended. They do not have a problem with mass shootings anymore because they removed removed automatic uh, guns, okay? You are allowed a handgun. You have to go through uh, a registration and safety courses. Absolutely. That is a safe environment, and, and it is absolutely eliminated. I believe it's 10 years that they've gone without any type of mass uh, suicide, or I'm sorry, mass, mass shooting. Mass shooting. Yeah. And I agree with that. See, I, I, you know, I used to live overseas myself, and I'm always telling people there's other countries that have a very, very sane, if you will, for lack of a better word, sane society, um, with that, and they, they do it successfully without the use of gun, handguns, you know? And I think we need to adopt. I mean, we don't say be like them, but we are saying look at what they have done and just, you know, adopt. 
adopt it. There's there's not, it. nothing nothing wrong with trying it. You know, the, the excuse from the GOP is get more guns. You know, allow them in churches, allow them in schools, allow them everywhere. That isn't solving the problem. Look right. around the world. What has solved this problem? Right. The only country in the in in the world that has this problem is the United States of America. Okay. We're not looking to take away anybody's guns. I totally respect your right to bear arms. Right. We're just looking for gun safety. I'm not a proponent of gun control. I'm a proponent of gun safety. So that means you need to make our people safe in America, whether they're going to school, whether they're going to concert, wherever they may be. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ms. Gonzalez. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank your you. pastivity. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. Keep up the good Okay, I'm here with the Shanker family from Hollywood, Florida. And in lieu of the shooting that took place in Parkland, um, they have a, a different take on things. Um, they're so fearful what's happening because our Constitution or our law makers don't know how to protect their children. So they decided to do something very, I think a lot of people will be doing soon. So I'm going to let them tell their story. <laughs> Well, we're here because the continued school shootings are unacceptable. It's a plague on our society. This can't continue, and we need to do something realistic that's going to make a difference. And I've, I've been talking to people who are supporters of the Second Amendment, who are responsible gun owners, who are fearful about losing what they consider to be God-given rights. And I can respect that position. I don't feel a need to, for guns. I don't, you know, I, I, I don't need it. But I get where they're coming from. And it's clear that taking a position of ban all guns isn't going to get anywhere. What we need is the responsible gun owners to come. They're the ones that are the experts. How do we fix this? I'm open to any option you put on the table. You want to say more armed guards at schools? Fine. Let's do that and better background checks, even if you think that that might not be perfect. But we don't need perfect solutions. Tax, we, tax those gun owners? We need to make to it better. For this stuff. I, I, don't, I don't care. Honestly. Funding should come from somewhere. You want to keep your guns? Be part of the solution, right? Don't stand up and be complicit in the continued murder of children. Hold on to your gun and make a difference. Make it better. Save people's lives. Be an American. And we, we've taken a different approach. Our kids are homeschooled, so I, you know, we don't feel it as much. But one day, I had hopes that my kids would be able to go to high school and feel safe and comfortable and not have to worry about walking through metal detectors and stuff like that. I've dealt with that situation in the past. I've been in schools in, in Miami that have really had bad impact on society and we need to start making better decisions get those responsible gun owners to come up with solutions and get our politicians to start caring about what we're doing in schools and not so much about how they're lining their pockets thank you Great. thank you thank you so much and oh wow and that was another hashtag pissed mom <laughs> but I'm gonna go hashtag pissed family because they are sick of it and so are we thank you so much okay oh, okay I'm hello so <laughs> Okay, I'm here with Ebony and Stephanie. Hi. 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 Okay, so my first question is, why did you ladies write these signs? Let's hold those signs up so we can get a shot. Um, I'll go ahead and start. Okay, so you are? Stephanie. All right, so Stephanie's going to start first and tell me, what, what is this sign all about? Well, um, I have a 13-month-old, my very first child. Oh, wow. And thank you very much. Um, and I think um, at times like this, um, it's affected me a little bit more than it has before. You know, I have a kid now, and um, so there's that love there that is indescribable. Absolutely. And so when something like this happens, it's extremely, extremely devastating. You know, my cousin uh, went to was at the high school when the shooting was happening, wow. and um, me yeah, she was like texting me from the classroom, and it's. It's very, it, it, it reaches a place in the heart that it never did before, especially as a mother, um, knowing that the kids have gone through something like that, something that can be prevented, you know, with gun control and things like that. And so, you know, I'm pissed off and I'm angry and I'm sad for the families 
Cubans and you know this sign just kind of represents like the anger and you know now like we really more than ever need to you know step up and do something have our voices be heard the kids are already doing a phenomenal job of speaking up um, so that's kind of like where what led me to this point to make this sign <laughs> wow okay that was a mouthful and now I just have one question to add to that so you mean your cousin was literally yes. in one of those classrooms she was, she in was, fear she was in the hallway when they when they rang the bell and wow. he started shooting and she was running she was running for her life she luckily was able to get into a classroom she they were locked in the classroom under the table you know she was texting you know that what was happening and that she was okay but they you know once the shot stopped and the SWAT team came in uh, she let us know that she was okay and um, I'm just so grateful that she was um, so it's um, it definitely was too close to home I'm getting cheers just I, I mean I'm ready to tear up because every time I watched it on the news I was in the home crying and I like took the Facebook because I'm like oh okay so now Evan right Evan Evan yes what was your story about behind your side. Well, you know, like you said, you, you said you took to Facebook, and I think that's what a lot of people, uh, I think a lot of people take to Facebook, and I've done that in the past, and I've seen these things kind of blow up, and then Trump says some other crazy stuff or something else crazy happens, and then you move on to the next thing. And I, I just don't want that to happen, and I want to be really educated about what we can actually do. You know, I think that it's such a polarizing topic. People think, like, people that are own guns are very protective of their right to own guns. I don't personally own them. So, like, where can we stop having this conversation? It's, it's not a black and white thing. No one wants to take away your hunting rifle. We want to make it harder for assault rifles to get in the hands of mentally unstable people people. And to, to be honest, assault rifles to get in anybody's hands. So like, you know, my sign says like, we need responsible gun owners. Like, come to the table. Let's talk. Like, let's not like, have the conversation exactly. where it's like guns versus non-guns. Exactly. It's not what it is. We all love our kids. There is a common truth there. Like, let's start there. Exactly. And that is wrong, what's wrong with America at, at this moment. Yes. It's my way or no way, you know? It's no in-between and it has to be compromised. Yeah. So I have another question. Would you put your kid in private at school now. So it's really a crazy story. I, I kept my son home from school um, the day after the shooting. He's four. He's starting kindergarten. And I was actually supposed to go on a tour of North Broward Prep, which is a private school. Right. And that's where they had a scare Balls the next day. I don't think they're safe anywhere with this right. stuff going on. So private school, you know, we're very resourced. We're very lucky. And it's still not safe. Parkland was the safest city in Florida was voted. Yes, so was private city, school yeah. isn't even any safer. The question I think is, I'm scared to send my kid to school. Right. Private, public. I, I was looking into homeschooling. I'm not equipped to homeschool my kid. I, I did homeschool my son for about a year. I had him in a private Christian school at one point, and then I homeschooled him. And, and it's really a crazy story because the superintendent now was the superintendent that sent someone to my home thinking that my son was retarded for doing the right thing. He was doing the right thing, and they went to chastise him. So, it, it, yeah, we, we got to do something about that, and we got to vote on the right people who's going to do the right things because some people they get they start off wanting to do the right things but then they end up straying exactly money is the root of all evil as they say but you mentioned something that I would love for our country to stop jumping on the bandwagon and saying and it's called mentally unstable people because here's the deal right now you're talking to me I seem sane I could be saying I could be sane right now but because now I have a gun in my hand, I'm upset about something, I don't like something, my boss pissed me off, someone at work pissed me off. Now I'm gonna go get my gun because now I'm invincible. I'm gonna show you. Yeah. You know, so part of it to me is that. So it's not about mentally yeah. instability, but with this particular shooting, there were signs. Yes, there they were did. Plenty of signs. There, you know, I get stupid things sent to me all the time off my messenger, and I sent something that was very disturbing to the police officer, to the police um, headquarters, and I never heard anything back. So what happens to that information when you see something, you say something, then what happened to the something? Yeah. You know, what happens? Yeah, I mean, I think it's scary that it fell through the cracks, but I'm also really happy.
happy that that's not distracting people from talking about guns. Absolutely. Because, you know, mental health is a worldwide problem, yeah. but only in America are these things happening. Right. So it's not just guns, right? There's a lot of layers. I think it's also about that masculinity is, Amen. is yeah. has no empathy and no yeah. connect. You know, we're teaching men not to talk about their problems, but to fight out. So there's a lot of problems, yeah. but it starts with the guns. It should not be easy to put 200 rounds without changing a clip. I mean, those are obvious things. So I guess it's for me, it's like, let's just start there. Right. You know, there's a lot of things that need to happen, but you know, assault, uh, you know, assault rifles. Right. And, Follow point bullets. Right, and 200, like, you don't, he did not have to change clips. I don't know, I don't have a gun, so I don't know all the terminology, but right. he didn't have to change clips and he fired 150 rounds. Okay, wrap it up. Sorry, I could talk for two That's days. That's okay. All right, no, I love your passion, I love it. So thank you, ladies, thank you so much, thank you. Thank you. Um, YRQ TV, thank YRQ. you. Thank you. YRQ. 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 Okay, so I'm here with Zayana Salcedo, and she is she ha, she knows personally two of the kids that were affected from the gun violence that took place. They are actually in the hospital right now, fighting at this moment for their lives. And Cecil's going to just walk us through some of that. Yeah, there were uh, two girls from my church in uh, Coral Springs. One um, is right now in the ICU. A uh, couple bullets went through her whole body, destroyed one of her lungs. Her ribs are shattered, so she had to have platinum implanted. It's a miracle she's even alive today. She's struggling, but she's alive. And then the other one actually did pass away. Her name is Alina Petty, and she was 14 years old. And she used to volunteer in our church. Well, come on, keep me together, because you're gonna make me cry with you. I know it's hard, it's really hard. She volunteered with, with my son. They, uh, they went to uh, Key West to clean up post uh, Irma. So she was a really sweet girl, and uh, she's dead. Okay, you know what? We're gonna cut this interview, and I'm gonna give a hug. You can keep rolling. I just no, want to no, give. Okay. I just want to give Cecilia a hug Thank here, because I understand. Um, I have a 12-year-old, and uh, he didn't go to school Thursday, but I did send him to school on, on Friday, and it was so painful to put him in that bus. I don't know if he was gonna come home or not. Exactly. exactly. So enough is enough. So let me ask you, what do you want to see happen here? What do you what, what do you think we should do to solve the problem? They need to have laws that are common sense in which we don't allow uh, domestic abusers and especially mentally ill people to just buy a gun, especially a 19 year old. There has to be some some controls. It's not all about the NRI money and NRA money. Um, they want to put more business into you know more money into the pockets by sending more guns to school. How is that going to help anything? Exactly. We need to stop this madness. It's not a business anymore. It's not about a business anymore. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And my prayers Cheers. go out to your family and everybody that knows these kids. Just everybody, because right now everyone always say let's pray, but we need to do more than just prayer right we now. Need praying to right now. Yeah, we need to we get involved. involved. We need to get involved. It's Amen. Be a funeral service on uh, Monday at 11 a.m. for Alina Petty at the um, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Coral Springs. Okay. Thank it's you. Uh, at 11 a.m. Thank, so Thank, Thank you for speaking with us. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay, so here's some of the signs that we have displayed out here from some of the parents and the kids. I just wanted to say the kids came out really representing today in lieu of this year. Okay, we want people without guns. My right to live. Boy, that says it all. Your right to bear arms versus my right to live. How about that one? Rubio, our kids are more important than NRA. Yes, they are. And I hope that they get the message here today. Just hope that they're listening. Yes, President Trump, the NRA, in our Congress, we hope that you are listening. The surviving students of the Park Lane shooting said there would be the last mass shooting in this country. For YRQ TV, I'm your host, Yvette Casada. No more.